Let's take a look at adding the Cheddar Gorge files, which I've provided. The link is in the description. First of all, I'll click on the color in the top right, that red pixely thing. That's going to give us the height map. And I'm going to add Cheddar Gorge height map. It's just a basic PNG file, so I'll hit open. And the height here isn't the real height, so I'll need to modify that. So I'll change the scale value below the height map box to 10. Uh, that's actually a little bit too high, but not too much, but we're going to sort that out in a minute. Um, Cheddar Gorge is in the southeast of England. It's a deep, steep-sided gorge with a road going through it. If I click on the colour image box, I can then add the colour satellite overlay. I prepared these previously in QGIS. Now I'm going to spin around with my left mouse button. I'm going to take the scale down to about 7 which is going to be more like it is in real life. Then I'm going to click on the perspective camera view and hold down the space button, left mouse button, position it like this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the color of the base. So I'll click on the color of the base. I'll change it to more of a white color or light gray, in fact, but maybe closer to white. And then I'm going to go to fog. Now you might find if you've got a laptop or a computer without a very good graphics card the fog may not work properly for you my pc is quite a powerful one with i think it's an rtx 3070 or 3080 graphics card a big beast which can handle this but if i go to the fog setting on the left so i make sure i'm on all i go to fog the density will just add loads of fog so i'm just going to take that up about halfway so what I then want to do is I change the decay value. So if I change the decay slider up, we see it kind of goes away, it thins it out a bit. If I change the phase all the way down versus all the way up, you can kind of see what it does. It's hard to understand exactly without playing with it, but I'm going to keep the phase somewhere in the middle. I'll change it back to zero for now. So you can use the sliders or you can just enter the numbers. Phase, zero, decay, let's make that five density let's take that down to three okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the sky value and first of all i'm going to change it to atmospheric scattering i'm going to scroll up here to the top i'm going to change the sun angle to five and hit enter it's going to make it pretty dark so when i do that i'll go down to film and change the exposure i'm going to take that up to about 10 again i'm just going to type in 10 and hit enter and then I'm going to go up to sun angle and I use, I like to hover over the vert vertical bar so I see the arrow pointing both ways. When I see the arrow, I can hold down my left mouse button and just manually move the sun around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the sun so it's kind of behind the scene like that. And now I'm going to go and change the fog density back down a bit. Maybe just to like one, fog density of one, enter. And I'm going to left click, reposition the scene a bit. I'm going to change the decay of the fog down a bit. No, up a bit, sorry. Decay of the fog is going to be, yeah, like, let's try. Oops, density should be one. Decay for the fog, let's make that eight. Eight, enter. And if I hit the aces button on film, you can see what that does. So I'm going to keep aces on. Gamma value, now if I put that to one, and hit enter you can see what it does if i hit three for gamma probably go lighter but i want it to be one kind of moody atmospheric i'm going to reposition things a little bit like this now what i'm going to do the horizon at the moment is flat but if i go to my map settings where is it going not my map settings. I go to my, yeah, sorry, I go to my light settings on the left and then I go down to lens and change it from PE, which was, that's perspective projection, and I change it to SG, which is stereo graphics. That's going to change the horizon. Then I'm going to turn the sun on at the top of the light settings and I'm going to change the sun area, maybe 33 to make it bigger. We can't see it, but if I turn the Rayleigh value right down, 
That's going to make it kind of black and white. So I don't quite want to do that. Let me turn it up. I'm going to turn the me value right down. Sorry. Uh, that's going to change it. I'm going to bring the sun angle down to four. There we go. Let me just move this up a bit. So you can see how that works. And then I can move the sun around like this. Let's do that. And the last thing I'll do for this scene, I think, is I'll go over to my map settings on the right. I'll scroll down until I see bounce and then diffuse is going to be 10 and scatter let's use 10 for that too okay and maybe let's make it a bit more intense so i'm going to take the intensity value in the sun setting on the left up to 100 and then the exposure let me try yeah let me try on this the exposure is going to be yeah, maxed out yeah, we'll max it out and then we'll change the vignette value to. Let's try that. OK, so I have just added two basic layers. Let me turn off the color one. We've got Cheddar Gorge height map and Cheddar Gorge color overlay. If you're doing this in your own machine, like I said, unless you have a powerful computer, with a good graphics card. It can be quite slow and it might take ages to render. But that's how it works. I've just gone through things fairly quickly here. Hopefully you can follow along. I can turn the scene around all I like. It's a fairly basic data set, but you can see with a little bit of patience and not too much time in Aerial Odd, you can go from something really basic to something really quite interesting. Probably looking at this, I would take the density of the fog down a little bit more. It's at one at the moment, so let's try 0 0.75. Yeah, that's probably a bit better. Okay, so that's all for now. Hopefully you find that useful and you can experiment with this on your own machine.